G'day and welcome back to my hobby room. Now, well, for those of you that ask, Mass Cat is having a nap over there. Yes, that's where she sleeps on my little day bed. I have a bed in my hobby room because, you know, being an old bugger like I am, um, you know, I get a little bit tired sometimes, you know, especially, you know, answering all those um, messages from the river counters. <laughs> and I have to um, have a little nap there with my cat. But anyhow, that's, that's, that's by the by. This video, okay, um, why won't I buy or build Tamiya. I mean, Tammy is great, isn't it? Uh, Tammy kids are fantastic. Tammy kids go together well. You know, they've been building brilliant stuff for years. I won't build them. And I won't buy them. Okay. So, um, you interested in finding out why? I mean, it's not that I hate Tamiya, but there's a problem. There's a huge problem. And the reason why I'm not building any Tamiya, really, it's just not happening. So are you intrigued? <laughs> Want to know more? Great! Roll the music! Merchandise still available at the store. 20% uh, off this week if you're watching this live. Of course, if it's next week and you're watching it... it we won't. Look, if you're going now, <laughs> mugs and t-shirts and all kinds of stuff are 20% off. Now, why don't I like Tamiya? I mean, it's great, as I said. Millions of people around the world love Tamiya kits. I don't. And there are three reasons. <laughs> Let me get on with them, okay? Reason number one, aircraft, okay? They're too easy. Shake and bake. That's where they got the reputation. Shake and bake. They fall together, you know. I know there are exceptions, but I'm talking about the general kits that we buy that we can afford, okay? Because there's a bloody expensive Tamiya stuff up there. Sure, that's, you know, very complex. But uh, the general run-of-the-mill garden variety Tamiya kit, okay, is expected to fit, expected just to go together. That's it. There is no flash to cut off, right? There are no seam lines to trim. I mean, my friend buddy um, Becker, <laughs> nearly forgot his name, um, Becker says he doesn't even dry fit. He just cuts the part off the sprue, you know, cleans it up that little bit, takes seconds, wax and glue on it, puts it in because he knows it's going to fit. It's going to be perfect. Well, where's the challenge in that? Okay, where's where's the fun? And and the kit goes together and it's done. And this is the thing. Tammy kits build up quickly. They build up well. They're very well detailed, generally speaking. Okay, there are exceptions I'll talk about later. And you get a good model. But the thing is, any friggin' monkey can do that, right? 100 monkeys can all build bloody Tamiya kit and they all get exactly the same result, right? There's no you in it. It's just an assembly job, right? You just assemble it, bang, it works, that's it. Now, if you need that because you're like your PTSD and you're doing therapy, perfect. That's good for you. And that's, you know, no problems at all. That's, um, you know, that's what you need. That's what you want. I'm not bagging that, okay? I'm talking about me and my needs, okay? So that's, you got to, this is the thing. This is not slagging off Tamiya. This is saying why Tamiya doesn't work for me. The problem is mine, all right? As my therapist keeps telling me, you know, the reason why you've had three wives and you are currently not without a partner, Harry, the problem is yours. <laughs> well, i got the cat. <laughs> Anyhow, so. Tamiya aircraft kits, all right? I've built a few. Well, I kind of fell asleep in the middle of them. I was building a Messerschmitt 172nd, which, well, no, one, it was a 148, but a Messerschmitt's very small, isn't it? A 148, and the one thing I thought I needed to clean up, seemed like there was a seam line on the top, you know, the top of the fuselage back there, and I was going to clean it up, and someone said, you know, Messerschmitts have that little ridge there, don't clean it up, because I thought, oh, Tamiya's got this wrong, something for me to do, no. And this is the thing, there's nothing for me to do. Now, Becker just recently did a video where there was basically this pie chart that's been going around where, you know, back in the old days of the pie chart, we'll do one here, right? 50-50, used to be 50% build, 50% paint, chuck the decals on, that was it, you know? Um, I'd argue probably more like 75% build, 25% paint to put the decals on for me in the 60s, all right? So that was the thing, you know, it was just basically the build was everything just about everything. The painting was secondary and then decals on, that was it. There was very little weathering or anything like that. Even today, I'm still probably 60-30. The trouble is the Tamiya kit, you're looking at 30% build, 60-70% paint, and this is it. Paint. I don't like the paint. 
I, I really don't. I do it because it has to be done, all right? But if I don't have to pay something, I get away with it. I mean, that's why now I'm using things like Posca pens because I can get those things coloured and done really quickly and I don't care, okay? I don't enjoy painting. I don't want to spend hours weathering and weathering and weathering. Okay? And I did a whole video on this about, you know, um, it was a bit of a parody to the rivet counters that we all got, but the rivet counters didn't get it. I don't want to paint. I don't want to spend hours withering. I don't want to spend a month chipping something, okay? I don't want to have to pre-shade. I don't want to do any of that. I don't pre-shade, ever. I'll post-shade if it's needed, you know? And I'll usually just do that as a simple effect. I've found life color liquid pigments, which basically do all the effects I need. They do them quickly, and that's on my ships. We'll talk about that later. So for me, aircraft, yeah, um, they're shake and bake. They go together too easily. Generally, garden variety ones, okay? I know there are exceptions, don't start bloody rabbiting on in the bloody comments. Oh yes, this particular kit of the Hellcat. Rah, rah, rah. Yeah, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the general kit you'll buy, you can afford, okay? Well, Fording's another thing as well. I mean, sure, the old ones, I mean, Becca talked about the old kits from the 70s, 80s, that you can pick up, you know, probably for three or four shekels, you know, and they're good kits. They go together well, okay? They're fine, they're easy, and away you go. And if you're just starting the hobby, that's probably not bad. But here's the problem there too. If you start the hobby with Tamiya and that's your expectations and you only build Tamiya and that's your expectations, as soon as you try something else, like, you know, people slag off Airfix, uh, in Airfix, you may have a little bit of flash to clean up. You will have to probably clean a seam line off. Some parts may need a little bit of adjustment, although they're not as bad these days, not with all the CAD stuff, okay? The CAD stuff, you know, but older Airfix kits, yeah. You had to do some modeling. This is the thing. I like to model. I like to get my hands in there and do things, okay? And not painting. Painting, especially now with my fat hands and, you know, as I'm getting older and my eyes aren't the best, it doesn't do it for me. I like to model. I, I like to correct things. I like to scratch build stuff. All right, so let's, let's talk more about that. We'll talk about reason two. Yes, got my camouflage hat on because we're going to talk about armor, okay? Tamiya armor. Now, um... Yeah, well, <laughs> I did talk about this one in that other video, right? Tamiya's horrible T-34. Now, this is, well, it fits together. It goes together. It's easy to build. There's bugger all of it. It's got these horrendous bloody rubber band tracks. It's incredibly inaccurate, and it was a toy, okay? So it is where Tamiya sort of, well, it's early days, where the, the ball was let down. This is supposed to be a little remote control or whatever sort of toy. And there was a number of these, okay? It's, it's a pretty crap kit. Unfortunately, this was my introduction to Tamiya. And as I've said in other videos, you know, I was, um, I'd never built Tamiya because I'd grown up and modelled in, I was living in Western Australia and Africa at the time, right? And there, all we got was Airfix, a tiny bit of Revel, some other sort of strange things. I don't know what they were. They were just the odd, weird sort of kit. I had never seen a Tamiya kit. I had never built a Tamiya kit. And then in the 70s and 80s, um, and as was into the 90s, well, I was married and I had children and, you know, I was career and all those sort of things that get in the way of doing something more interesting like your hobby. So I never saw the heyday of Tamiya. Right? I never experienced it. I didn't have that. I knew Airfix and I was there in the golden years, the 60s and 70s of Airfix. So I loved Airfix and I knew Airfix. When I came back to the hobby, I, um, I bought Airfix and then I bought a trumpeter kit and I loved those. And then I bought Dragon and I loved them. And then from the Dragon armor that I bought, built really enjoyed it and it was sort of my first real proper armor kit i wanted a t-34 because i'd seen this movie white tiger well, i've told the story before but just as far as this video i'll quickly gloss over it so i'd watch this movie called white tiger it's a russian movie about this tiger tank that um you know basically is is is, is hiding away there in the in the soviet block there and is basically snotting out all the t-34s now i love watching all these t-34s run around it was something new for me i didn't know anything about t-34s i mean i was just getting to know armor at this stage. I knew the German text, but I didn't know anything about Russian text. So I went down to the hobby store and I said, oh, this is what I wanted. I want a T-34, you know? And um, the guys ripped me off. They charged me 55 Australian dollars, right? That's about $35, $37 US, okay? So over five shekels for this piece of junk. It's worth two, all right? It's not a five shekel kit. I paid three shekels. Nearly half that for that last was a cyber hobby dragon kit, all right? Google Blitz. 
I thoroughly enjoy that. You know, magic tracks, um, a little bit of photo which made it interesting. Plenty of parts and everything to keep you sort of, you know, occupied. And then fairly easy to paint and all the rest of it, okay? Um, admittedly, with the Tamiya T34, I ended up cutting out the horrible grills and I put photo which grills in, all right? So that was kind of fun. I enjoyed doing that. And I put a metal barrel in it. In the end, I probably spent about 70 Australian dollars. So I'm nearly getting more than two and a half times what I paid for the uh, Dragon Cyborg kit that I built out of the box. So this was the annoying thing. I'd paid a lot of money and I got a pretty substandard kit that's not accurate and my enjoyment level wasn't there and and still got rubber band tracks on. I've actually got some Dragon um, Magic tracks for that. One day I'll put those on, but I mean, you know, it's still trying to make a bloody silk purse out of a pig's ear, you know. And this is the problem. The... Generally, and there are exceptions, but generally, Tamiya armor is basic. It's uh, molded softly. It's lacking in detail. You know, it's it's okay, but it's nothing like a dragon kit, nothing like a man kit, right? Yeah, it'll fit together. Yeah, you can build it in a weekend and, you know, get on with all the weathering and everything else. Yes, you can throw a ton of aftermarket on it, but they're not cheap, right? They're kits for what you get. For what you pay, I don't believe that's value for money. I think people are just buying them because of the name. So again, Tamiya failed to meet my criteria. The kits, in this case, were poor, right? The aircraft kits are terrific, but they're boring, in my opinion. Uh, the armor kits are boring and also very average and expensive. Um, that's two strikes. All right, let's move on to strike three, and I'll tell you what the real problem is. Maybe a strong coffee to do this third part. And my sailor's cap, because I'm going to get serious now. Well, serious as I get. Now, we've done aircraft, shake and bake. Good kits, but they don't cut it for me. We've done armour. They're not very good kits. Oh, they're okay, but they're expensive for what they are. And again, it doesn't cut it for me. Ships. Okay, you know how many sailing ships that Tamiya produce? I looked it up on Skullmates, right? Zero. So here's your main problem. Tamiya don't make sailing ships. And that's my main thing. I mean, that's the thing that really I love, okay? Tamiya do make ship kits, but there's only 18 different types of ships they make. There are versions of them, all right? They've got various ones. And, you know, there's about 190 1700 kits. And they're, I bought a few of those. And they're not bad kits what they are, but they're too tiny. Okay, I can't really get into it. Now, yes, Tamiya does do 1350 scale ships, and they're not bad, okay? Uh, except for that Bismarck, right? <laughs> the Tamiya 1350 Bismarck is abysmal. It is dreadful. It really, I had one. Luckily, I only paid $50 for it, right? About, you know, 30 bucks US, because that's all it's worth. I mean, they now sell for like $100. It's absurd. Uh, if you throw a ton of aftermarket at it, you know, you buy everything. You buy massive amounts of photo etch, you know, wood deck barrels sort of, but, you know, you really have to go to town with stuff to improve it. And it'll be okay. It'll be good, all right? But this is Tamiya. Why isn't it buildable out of the box? Which is, you know, kind of aircraft kits are fabulous, you know? Even the armor kits are pretty well built out of the box. In fact, I know the armor kits now do come with a bit of photo etch, and I think they are putting in better links and lengths and, you know, as uh, far as they, they have improved, okay? But I'm still talking generalities, okay? So the battleships, there's only about three dozen of them. That's all I've got. And, well, the Bismarck's terrible. The, um, they've got a hood and a few other things. The, the Prince of Wales and the, and, you know, the King Edward and those sort of things, they're not bad. Their Japanese ones apparently are better. And, and I've looked a couple of times at getting one of their, their Japanese um, destroyers. Okay, or the cruisers, the big cruisers. Um, they don't look too bad. Maybe, just maybe, that might persuade me. I mean, if somebody's got a, um, you know, a heavy Tamiya cruiser out there and they want to send it to me for evaluation, I'll review it. I'll build it. We'll see. Maybe that will change my mind on Tamiya. But right now, no. It's just not happening. It's just not happening at all. They've got some weird scales as well. I was looking at it. You've, you've mainly got those 190, 1700, and then you've got 36 or so, you know, three dozen um, 1350, okay, uh, in the armoured ships. Uh, then they've got some 1300, 1500, and 1800 kits, okay? And these are from the 50s, and they're wood. Can you believe it? Tamiya started out building wooden ships. 
I mean, I would have thought better of them if I knew that. <laughs> but not sailing ships, no, not as far as I can tell. Their, um, you know, their first kit was a, as a Bismarck or something, you know. And um, I think it was the, yeah, the 1500 or something Bismarck. And, and it was wood. You've got a wooden hull and the rest of it. You build it up. I mean, the detail wouldn't have been that high. It's a small scale and it's wood. You know, it's, it's not kind of what you do. With wood, you want to go bigger, you know. But there you go. Tamiya built, well, made wooden kits. Who knew? Who knew? They started doing their plastic kits in the 60s and, and they, you know, and then and on it went. And as I said, by the 70s and 80s, Tamiya were in their heyday and into the 90s. Yeah, Tamiya's going berserk. Everyone's finding that the kits are just brilliant. They, you know, they build up so easily. They're, they're, you know, and a lot of people coming back to the hobby just went, wow, this is good. This is not like I remember Airfix. <laughs> now, why do I like to build Airfix? Well, you've only got to look at the Airfix St. Louis that I'm building right now, okay? Now, the thing is, beautifully sculpted ships. Beautifully. You know, they're, they're, the ships kits, the sailing ship kits, right? The sailing ship kits from the 50s and 60s, absolutely fantastic. I think it's because they were basically moulded from wooden, wooden models that had already been made. There wasn't any computer-aided design then, right, as such for modelling. So everything had to be handmade and sculpted. So they were basically expert ship builders built these these ships, right, these models, and then they were turned into kits and the parts then produced in injection moulding of plastic. And that's the thing. That's why there's Hella kits from 60s and 70s still made now, like the Victory from Hella, still the best Victory that you can ever buy. You know, the, the moulds are getting pretty old and a bit worn, and there's all the ships, as I say, if you can get the white box version of those ships back from the 60s, or Airfix, they are fantastic. Even, even the, basically the E-boat, which is an S7 Schnell boat, right? And I did the video on that. That's from 75. That was as crisp and as clean as Revel's new offering from the 21st century. And it even stood up against the new 4 kit, the S38, from 4. So this was amazing. I... I actually didn't think it would be that good. I did a comparison, right? There'll be a link here. A three-way comparison of those kits, right? The um, 75 Airfix S7 e-boat, okay? The 2000 moulding of the Revel S100, right? Chanel boat. And then the new, only released like last year, four kit of the S38, which is between between the two. And then, of course, the four kit is fantastic. It's you know, a lot of computer-aided design, all the rest of it. But the Airfix kit is still... Superb. If you can get an old white box, I mean, if you get one of the later version red boxes with the mouldings all wrecked, what do you expect after 50 years? It's rooted, right? You know, goodness me. It's not like you buy you buy a 50 year old car and expect it to be like a showroom car the day you you know drive that out brand new. No, this is the thing. They're worn out. So those Airfix kits from the 60s and early 70s, I love those ships. And with this particular one, the St. Louis. Not only is it beautifully moulded and it has so much potential, the um, the kit came to me wrecked. Now, this is where I shine and this is where I am so happy. The kit is a wreck. It was all glued together badly and, you know, he had actually glued cannons on the deck and he hadn't got the bulkheads in correctly. He'd made a mess of it. So I pulled it all to pieces, cleaned off all the glue, tied it all the parts up, fixed and had to sort of scratch things to repair them, Put it all back together, slapped a wood deck on it, painted it all up, and now look what I've got. That to me is the hobby. For me. Not for you, maybe. But for me, the hobby is putting myself into it. So not only have I rescued a kit that was ruined and would be thrown away, but it's a rare kit, at least here in Australia. You just you can't get them. They're not on the shelves. They haven't had them retail for years. They're very hard to find. So I have rescued that rare kit and I've made it better because I've added a little bit of scratch and added a few things to it. So that's the thing. I value added. I put myself into it. The bounty, right? Revel's bounty. Now, that's a. it's not a bad kit. It's okay out of the box. But there's a lot wrong with it. But again, the basis of it, the hull is beautifully molded. The shape is correct. There's lots of little details on it that are quite good. But I took it further. I added lots of scratch to that. I put cloth sails on it. I rigged the whole thing with wooden blocks and cordage, right? And away I went. And I did a whole lot of wood effects on it too, which weren't hard to do. I even did the video showing how easy it was to do these wood effects 
with life color liquid pigments. So I didn't spend forever painting it. I had shortcuts and easy ways of painting it. I wish I'd had my Posca pens then, because some of the straight lines, yeah, that's about three or four goes of me trying to paint them and mask them and, you know, whereas if I had the Posca pens, done. As if you've got an edge to work off, you run the pen along, perfect. No masking, no nothing, perfect straight line. So the bounty, I mean, it got me second place in competition while well, I was beaten by a rusted tank, that's why. Yes, because this is the thing, you know. This is like David Eves was saying to me the other day. He put up pictures of his rusted out submarine. Well, one, it was a Gato. It was an American submarine, so you're basically sucking up to the Yanks. And two, this whole rusted look, right? This whole rusted and worn out look. That's the thing. You know, if I was to rust one of my wooden ships, everyone would get all excited and probably love it. Uh, wood don't rust. It corrodes. Yeah, it don't rust. <laughs> So there you have it, okay? I hope you made it to the end of the video and I hope you realize this is my point of view and my needs, all right? I am not saying Tamiya is bad, far from it. I recognize Tamiya as very well-made kits and beautifully detailed and all the rest of it. And you know, I understand all that. And if that's what I wanted, I'd be jumping up and down and I'd be a Tamiya fanboy. But they don't work for me. I need something broken that I can fix. I need something that requires my ingenuity and my uniqueness to make it different. And then I make it my own, okay? And okay, you can say, yeah, we do that with the painting. I don't like the painting, so this is the trouble. It doesn't work. Where you can put yourself in all that painting and everything, I'm not interested. I will spend a day trying to build a tiny bridge for a little ship, okay? And love it, and love that experience. But if you ask me to spend a day painting, I'll probably do half an hour, hour at the most to be bored. I mean, my airbrush sometimes doesn't get fired up for a couple of months at end, right? Well, the compressor doesn't get fired up or anything. Or even that's, I'm good that I've got the cordless now because at least I can drag that out if I want to do a quick airbrush or something. I don't do a lot of that. I do it when it's necessary, when I can't get around it. And now I've got bloody Posca pens. I mean, you know, I lived with rattle cans for years and I was happy with that. Rattle cans and a little bit of hairy brushing tidy up, happy as Larry. All right, now I've got these bloody airbrushes and I have to do all this, you know, airbrushing and all this work. <laughs> I don't mind it. Sometimes I get into it, okay. But the thing is, the premise of this video, I can't buy Tamiya because they don't have my subject, all right? They don't have the things that I want to build. I don't build Tamiya because I can't buy what I want, all right? Now, there is one little exception to this whole rule. Yeah, it's a car. It's a Honda S600, and it was given to me as a gift from Jim. Thanks, Jim. And the reason is I had one. I restored one on the ground up, okay? Fully restored it. So I will build that, and I know it's not going to be a very complicated build and everything, but I'm going to build it and change it to the one that I had. So there will be some of me in it. I will actually build that into the restored S600 that I fixed up and built in the 90s. So there you go. How about that? All right, well, look, I hope you stayed to the end. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button, okay? If you've got something to contribute, comment. Just, just be nice about it, all right? Don't get stuck into me that I don't like Tamiya. If you really do like the kind of stuff that I'm doing and you're not um, disappeared now in angst because you're a Tamiya fanboy, <laughs> then you can subscribe to my channel. If you love these sort of videos, hit the super thanks and throw me some shekels and I'll do more, okay? Or not, whatever, I don't care. You know? <laughs> and of course, you can always support me at Patreon and by being a YouTube member and you'll get my videos advert free and early. Yeah, and they get to basically have a waffle behind the scenes that you lot don't get to see. So there's a lot of that. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching. It's goodbye from Australia, and it's hooroo from Harry Udini.